Okay. So um, I've watched a lot of the uh, music critics do their top 10 and top bottom uh, best and worst songs of a given year. And I thought it was pretty fun, so I decided to do it myself. So I looked over Billboard's Hot 100 for the year 2019, the year-end list, and listened to all the songs multiple times and decided to see what I thought was the best and the worst. So now I'm going to go over the ones that I found to be the worst. So um, in the dishonorable mentions, uh, the first one up is Robbery by Juice World, And um, I get what he was going for. Like, that's the only reason why it's this low. It, it's at least entertainingly awful, and I get what he was going for. Like, as a vindictive drunk ex, he actually captures that fairly well. It's just not a good look. <laughs> like, it, for what he was going for, he does a good job. It's just not a particularly good look. Um, then, uh, the London, and, uh, this was, this would actually be a decent song, but Young Thug, like, I'm pretty big into hip-hop, but, and, like, I always knew Young Thug was big, but really, he's this big? Based on this showing, it's like, if he wasn't on the song, it would actually be fairly decent, but his voice is just so annoying, Honestly, the only reason it's not higher on the list is because there's other songs that describe match that description perfectly by worse artists. So, um, yeah, just a dishonorable mention for now. Um, so, no guidance. So, uh, yeah, Drake is uh, the sixth god, and I think that's because that's the quality of his average performance. Like, he was on multiple tracks this year, and he was okay on all of them. Like, he wasn't great on any of them, but he wasn't terrible on any of them. Like... If Drake's on a song, it lives or dies by the other artist. And in this case, Chris Brown's singing is not good. It, like it, Most of the times when people criticize Chris Brown, I don't really get it. This was the first time where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, now I get why the other critics don't like Chris Brown. This His singing on this is not good. But Cobra Cuds do. The video is actually pretty cool. Like, I do like the humor behind it. So, again, it could be higher on the list, but... For now, dishonorable mention. Now, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I think this is technically the tenth on the list. So, uh, shallow. Speaking of over singing, on this song, Lady Gaga's singing is I I just don't like it. And even if you eliminate the over singing, the production's just meh, and it's a grossly overhyped song, like. For how much Oscar buzz it was getting and, like, how much Grammy buzz it was getting, it does not merit it. It's a very, very dull song. It's incredibly oversung. And I just don't really get it. Like, this is definitely on the weaker end of Lady Gaga songs, if nothing else. So, um, yeah. Then uh, Leave Me Alone by Fly By Night Rapper. Yeah, it's the chorus is just shit. And that, that's about all I have to say about it. Like, I would say leave me alone, but he's a fly-by-night rapper, so I'm pretty much guaranteed he is going to leave me alone. Like, th this song is just that chorus, man. Uh, now we get to a decently interesting one. Uh, Cardi B and Bruno Mars, Please Me. Now, um, the problem with this is I don't know what they were going for. Like, the chorus is very whiny and beggy, so I thought that they might be going for, like, a sort of femdom thing, but then I thought about it, and it's, like, too focused on his pleasure, and it's not really, like, that focused on hers. Like, they're both focusing on their own, which doesn't really lend itself to femdom. And then it's like, okay, the beat's kind of romantic, but I don't even think they go for that particularly well. Like, I just don't really get what they're going for in this song. Like... What type of mood is this supposed to set? And, like, even beyond that, again, Bruno's singing on the chorus is just... it It's just not particularly good. And Cardi's verses are probably the weakest she's had all year. Like, there's just... I don't know what they're going for, and they don't do it well. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. So... The baby on this song is actually pretty good. Like I like the baby's verse, and the production isn't terrible, but uh, 
Little Baby on the chorus is like one of the things I hate in rap is meritless braggadocio. And it was like the whole chorus, he's like, Oh, I'm the best, I'm the best. And it's like, You're not even the best on this track. Just go away. Go away. And like, unlike the Fly By Night rapper, Little Baby actually has a couple of hits. And not all of them were terrible, but his vocals on this were just like, there was just something about them on this song that just did not sit well with me. Then, uh, so then we get uh, Kodak Black's Wake Up in the Sky and ZZ. And I'm saying Kodak Black because if Kodak Black wasn't on either of these songs, they would actually be pretty good songs. Like, I actually like Bruno and Gucci Mane on Wake Up in the Sky, and I actually like Travis Scott and Offset on ZZ. If you eliminate Kodak, both the songs are actually pretty good. Like, I honestly wouldn't mind either song. But Kodak just sounds so, so terrible. Like, honestly, if Kodak were to go the way of, like, a DJ Khaled and just get, like, great producers and great artists and put them together, he might actually be a good artist. Like, he does have a good ear for production. He does have a good ear for getting, like, other people involved, like, getting people together. And, like, on ZZ, when he does that, it's the Z shit, it's the Z shit, it's actually not that bad. Like, if he was just to go the way of DJ Khaled, get great producers and great artists together and maybe throw an ad lib or two on it, I would honestly probably wouldn't mind him. But his voice is just so, so terrible. It's like, how? Like, seriously, if he were to go the way of DJ Khaled, he might be okay. But until that day happens, his voice is just too annoying to stand. Now, um, Beautiful Crazy, like, this year on the Hot 100, there were a lot of very boring country songs, but this one was the only one that I actively felt like they didn't care. Like, a lot of the Dan and Shay stuff I found boring, but it was at least, like, I at least believed that they actually found this interesting. Whereas the whole opening portion here... It just sounds like they don't care. They're giving it because they have to write a standard love song type of thing. And the whole skit at the beginning is like, you don't even care about this song, do you? Like, at least most of the other country guys who had, like, boring hits this year, I at least believe they were sincere. But this song, with that opening skit, it's like, you don't even care about this. You don't even think this is interesting, do you? Like, seriously... It, you remove that skit, it would be a lot lower down on the list. It would still be a very, very boring song. But it would at least be boring in a way that I probably would have put like a Dan and Shay song over it. But with that skit, it's like, you don't even care about this, do you? You don't even find this interesting. And it's like, if you don't even find it interesting, how am I supposed to find it interesting? Um. Then you get to Lauren Daigle, you say, it, it's just an Adele song. Like, a lot of the other songs have, like, references and stuff to other songs. When I heard that riff, the first thing I thought was Adele. Like, it, it's an Adele song. Like, it, it's just an Adele song. And, like, it'd be one thing if it was a particularly well-done Adele song, but it's not. And, like, I'm not even particularly big on Adele in the first place. So, like, if you're going to copy her, you have to at least be, like, original or unique or better than her and she's not. She's not a particularly good singer. It's it's like a legit retread of an Adele song. That like, it's a boring song, and it's a straight copy. Like, it, honestly, I would not be surprised if this was just plagiarized. It is just a straight copy of an Adele song. And yeah. So uh, go loco. This song, I get the sense that they saw all of the other trends of the year and just put it together but since they couldn't do any of them well they just took a shittier version of them and went from there so one of the big trends was latin music so they're like oh can we get one of the big latin stars no but we can get this no-name latin rapper okay he'll do he'll do he, he fills our latin quota uh drake's on everything can we get drake on a song no no drake's too expensive um we can get tyga okay he's young money we can get him okay and it's like Oh, uh, Little Nas X had a horse in his video. Can we get the, can we get like a country star or like some weird hip hop thing? And it's like, no, but we we can get a horse in our video. And like, it'd be one thing if it wasn't just like combining a bunch of like 
different trends into one. But also, the song's called Go Loco, and it's a very, very boring song. Like, originally, I was thinking about putting Robbery over this and on the list proper. But then, when you actually look at the placement in, like, the Hot 100, you get, like, five or six mediocre songs before this. Then you hit this, and then you hit Robbery. And Robbery is kind of a breath of fresh air, just given how boring the preceding songs had been. Whereas this, it's simultaneously incredibly boring and cringe-inducing, which is a very, very rare combination to do. And, like, yeah, it... You, you have a song called Go Loco, and it's that boring. Seriously? Um, Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber, I don't care. So, um, it's just a shittier version of Beautiful uh, People. Like, it, it's literally just Beautiful People. And, like, Khalid, or Khalid, at least actually has the charisma to pull off a concept like this. Like, Khalid, I can actually believe not fitting in at these parties. Whereas, like, Justin Bieber, I don't believe it. Also, the like, the lyricism in Beautiful People is at least, like, I get a better sense why you wouldn't want to be there. Here, they're like, oh, I hate everyone here, I hate everyone here. And, like, okay, you, Justin has, like, a one phrase where it's like, oh, they're insecure, where it's like, okay, I kind of can understand that, but, like, once you remove that, it, it's like, dudes, you're some of the biggest celebrities in the world, like, why are you so insecure at these parties? And it's like, it, at least with beautiful people, you get the sense that it's like, oh, people are looking for a come up, and they're like, we don't fit in here. So I get it on that, but... It doesn't work here. They're two of the biggest celebrities in the whole world. They are the type of people who these parties are made for. Like, okay, you might be more introverted. I get it. But, like, they just don't sell it that well. But also, the production on it just doesn't work for, like, the weird, like, lonely vibe. But, like, the production on Beautiful People is what this song is trying to be. And also, some of the singing is just cringy. Like... The, I don't like nobody but you. It's like, yeah, that, that just doesn't work. It just, there's pretty much nothing about this song that this song does well, that beautiful people doesn't do and do better. So it is by far and away the most redundant song of the year. If nothing else, it's the most redundant song. So, uh, Seven Rings. Um, so there was a lot of conversation about the song being cultural appropriation. And uh, as a white guy... I'm not the best person to weigh in on this, but um, if you're going to culturally appropriate black culture, Soldier Boy? R really? Soldier Boy of all people? Like, if you remove the, my meh, you like my hair, she thinks, just bought it, parts of the song, it wouldn't actually be that bad. Like, when she's just singing, it's actually not bad. I honestly don't even mind the sample. But you get, the, like, Ariana Grande, Ariana Grande should not be rapping. Like, it's just so cringe-inducing to see her even try. And, like, even if you remove the cringe-inducing raps, the lyrics are just, like, so pretentious. And it's like, oh, you're better than me, you buy everything. And it's like, like, okay, I'm, like, break up with your girlfriend, I'm bored. She does, like, similar types of things. But at least there, the... It, it's not as cringe-inducing because the song is in her wheelhouse. Like, she isn't rapping on a song because she can't rap. <laughs> like, there's just... If you remove the rapping, it might be okay. But she didn't, so... Meh. And then, uh... Worst song of the year, Kung Kamla. So, um... This just... So there were a lot of Latin songs on the charts this year. Pretty much none of them were good. Um, Taki Taki, I almost put on as a dishonorable mention, but I didn't really feel it would be necessary. And, uh, like, Mia by Drake and Bad Bunny, it's fine. Like, I don't mind it, but it's not, like, good. It's like, of all, like, <sighs> I'm a pretty big K-pop fan. And, like, you have, like, five different Latin hits, only, like, one that's kind of passable, but, like, K-pop can't get anywhere on the charts. And, like, of, of all the foreign music, you get, like, y you give us this. <laughs> and it's, like, 
But on top of just being a like badly produced song, you then have Katy Perry being probably the most cringy she's ever been. Like, this is the part where I kind of reevaluate if Katy Perry was ever good or I was just a horny teenager when she started. And, like, I'm not sure which it is, but with songs like this, I'm leaning towards I was probably just a horny teenager. And it's like, the production's mediocre, and it's, like, Katy's just so, so cringy on it. And it's like... Latin music can be good, but apparently the only ones who make it stateside are either mediocre or bad at it. And, yeah. So, um, yeah, I will uh, leave it there. Kamla, worst hit of the year.